Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is James and today I want to give you guys an update on my electric vehicle conversion process. Now, in the last video, I gave a brief overview of the vehicle that I'm going to be converting. If you haven't seen that, that should be linked up there. Hopefully that's the right side. So it's a 2002 BMW 325xi. And I'll put a screenshot up here of everything that I found wrong with the car so far. Uh, I'll put it over there. So for 500 bucks, I would say that it is expected, but I did not anticipate it being this bad. Thankfully, a lot of the expensive components were actually included with the car. So things like the radiator, the wheel bearings, the front axles, and there was a few other things like a sway bar that was included as well. So the larger suspension issues can thankfully be replaced pretty easily, but uh, there are some other things I have to do myself. Now, thankfully, I actually found out that the website eeuroparts.com is located right up the street from me. So I was able to order some of the parts that I needed and pick them up within half an hour, which really has helped me out with this project because I don't have to wait for shipping times. While there is a little bit of a price premium, I'll say that the time that I'm saving is well worth it. So I'm thankful for that. It's gonna make this project much easier. But that's not what this video is about today. Today I wanna to talk about the motor that I have chosen for this project because I'm quite happy with what I got and especially the deal that I got on it. So I have been looking around for motors for two or three months now. I started in like early July looking and it's now almost September and I finally got a hold of one. Now the de facto standard for the longest time was the Netgain Warp 9 motor. It's a DC motor and I think it was, I don't know, 80 horsepower around there unless you wanted to adjust the brushes and get a little bit more amperage and voltage going to it, in which case you could get a little bit more power out of it, and a lot of people did. So that was kind of the standard, and I was really hoping to get a hold of one of those, but the problem is that they are expensive. They're about two grand new, and there's not very many used ones for sale. The most of the time they're included in a conversion, so people will sell the whole car. They usually don't part out a conversion. So it's really hard to get a hold of something used. Now, it's kind of a long story as to how I came across this person, but I'm very thankful that I did. His name was Paul, and he worked at EPC Corporations out of Massachusetts, which used to be an electric car conversion company, but they've kind of pivoted recently towards solar and solar storage, all that kind of stuff. I had found a link on his website that was a 10 inch motor for a thousand bucks and the deal was definitely too good to be true but I figured I'd reach out anyway. I emailed him about it and I was right, it was just an old misinformed listing that should have been taken down. So I kind of thought that that was just going to be a dead end. But Paul was actually interested in my project and wanted to kind of help me out. And one thing that they do is they take in trade-ins. So people will oftentimes want to upgrade their electric vehicle or just kind of swap it out and do another vehicle. So they will sometimes trade in their parts like electric motors, battery packs, controllers, get a little bit of a kickback from that to give them some of the money that they spent on it. And then maybe they'll buy another motor from the company or just use it for something else. Either way, they get these trade backs that they will then go through and refurbish and then sell at you know a discounted price. So I was very interested in this and he told me to just kind of wait it out for a little bit and see what ended up coming in. Lo and behold, a nine inch General Electric motor ended up coming in. Now, this was significant because it had the exact same power ratings of the motor that I originally inquired about. So at 144 volts, I think it'll reach about 150 kilowatts or something like that. The important part about this that uh, I realized is that because it's a nine inch motor compared to a 10 inch motor, the nine inch motor having the same specs will oftentimes have a higher red line in terms of the revolutions per minute. Now that is significant because with a BMW, one thing I noticed when I was driving it is that fifth gear is a direct drive gear, meaning that the RPMs of the motor match the drive shaft that's going to the differential. Oftentimes with newer cars that are more fuel efficient, you'll have an overdrive where the motor is actually spinning slower than the drivetrain, but this car did not have that. The best it could do was direct drive. So at like 50 miles an hour, the motor was sitting at about, I think 2,500 RPMs, like the gasoline motor. 
And that was kind of surprising because I'm so used to cars being at about 2,000 RPMs at 60 to 65 miles an hour. So I knew that this car liked to rev high. So the fact that this 9-inch motor was built to work at higher RPMs actually ended up being kind of a blessing in disguise because that's going to match with the transmission of the BMW better and give me better performance as electric motors are more efficient as they rev higher. So this seems to be working out great. And it's even a better advantage because when they take in these trade-ins, as I mentioned before, they will go through and basically re remanufacture them, you know, replace brushes, um, if there's any windings that are damaged, they'll replace them and just kind of give it a new paint job so it looks a little bit better. And so they were going to basically give me a like new motor. And the other advantage about this is that it's a general electric motor. It has very similar specs to something like a Warp 9, but this motor was used in a much more industrial sense, not consumer. So this motor cost about $7,000 new. And it was a 9 inch motor, but it has an 11 inch mounting plate. And that's even better for me because that's an even beefier plate for me to be able to attach the motor onto the transmission with. And it also means that it's going to be more compatible with adapter plates and things like that. It gives me some more wiggle room to work with, which is going to be great in the long run. But obviously, if I was having a problem with $2,000 for a Warp 9, there was no way I could pay $7,000 for this General Electric motor. Now, I did talk with him and kind of worked out a semi-sponsorship, so you guys are going to see some of their decals on the car. So what they're able to do is give me the motor for $600. And I think that that is honestly the best price that I could have gotten. I'd found some other Warp 9 motors and an Impulse 9, but all of them were over $1,000, and that was going to take me a while to save up to that point. But uh, he kind of hit the nail on the head with the price point that I was looking for all along. I know it was a little bit low and a little bit ambitious, but I knew somebody along the way would be able to work with uh, what I was able to afford at the time. And I think this motor is going to work really well in this car. It's got a lot of power. It's going to take the voltage that I wanted to put in, about 144 volts, and it's not that heavy. I think it's under 200 pounds, so it's not going to add a lot of weight back into the car. And I think it's just going to overall fit really well in the uh, you know, under the hood there, because it's going to be a lot of space, because that inline six that the BMW had before is a very long motor. So that means that there's going to be even more space in the engine bay after that's moved out, and maybe I can put some more batteries up there to help with weight distribution, or I can stick a controller up there, or even just, uh, you know, the charger or something like that. There's just more space all around for me to work with, which I'm really appreciative of. So that's kind of the big step forward that I've made with this project. Now, there are some other hurdles that I have to overcome. I'm currently trying to figure out the controller situation. Uh, potentially, they might be having a similar situation where somebody is trading in a controller, so they might be able to work with that and give me a discounted price, but if I can find something even cheaper, I might go with that to some extent. I'm not gonna go you know, super low to something that just is gonna fry itself in a week or something like that, or just blow up my motor. So I want something that is kind of more name brand, but something that isn't gonna break the bank. I'm looking for about the same price as the motor, maybe $600 or below, preferably below 400. I know that's ambitious as well, but I'm sure I might be able to work something out. I don't know if I trust my skills perfectly to be able to put together the Paul and Sabrina controller. I like the price of it, and I like the offering of about a thousand amps but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to personally put that together, but I might give it a shot if I can find some good documentation on it, but I'll look around for that. The other thing is batteries. I think to start out, and I did mention this in the introductory video of this project, the first rolling version of this car is not going to be anywhere near the final version of this car. So it's not going to be a range car meaning that even when it's done I don't anticipate going three or four hundred miles I would say the most that I might be able to get in the end is I don't know 200 and that's kind of ambitious as well because at its current weight of 3,500 pounds that's about 350 watts per mile so that's going to be hard to work with I'm going to need a lot of battery capacity to do that but I'm going to start out I believe with lead acid just because I need something to test with while I save up for battery packs. The advantage of the battery packs is that it's very easy to upgrade them over time. 
I can't really do the same thing with the performance of the car because that would involve me changing out the controller or the motor, which is kind of a pretty big project to do and also a little bit more expensive. It's much easier for me to get, say, one lithium cell and start out with that and then slot in another one down the road and then another one. It can kind of be done over time so I can build up the pack as, you know, again, time goes on. But uh, that's kind of where I'm going to start out with the most limited selection. So I'm going to start out with just cheap lead acid, then move to a very small lithium pack and slowly build that up over time because I think that's the most economical and budget-friendly way I can do this so this way I can get a great car over the course of time. So I'm really looking forward to working on this. I hope you guys are interested in this project. If you are, definitely subscribe and hit like so I know you guys are, again, uh, interested in following my progress. If you haven't already checked it out, there's also my website down below, electricbeamer.com, where I'm going to be writing stuff a little bit more often than these videos because these videos will be the more large updates. The website will follow kind of every step of the process that might not make it into a YouTube video. So check that down below. I do appreciate you guys sticking around for this. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.